it with today. And we love our affiliates. <laughs> news time, here's Brookie. Thank you, Carl. Good morning to you at home. First to our good news story for the day. John Farnham has reassured the nation, releasing his first statement since being diagnosed with cancer. In it, he confirms he has received the all clear from doctors today, exactly one year since his initial surgery. And Dickie will have the full statement on Today Extra in just a few moments. Victims of Queensland's youth crime crisis will be marching on state parliament shortly, demanding change. Andrea Crothers is there for us this morning. Andrea, they've got a message for the Premier. Yeah, Brooke, they sure do. They're demanding action so that Voices for Victims rally. It will kick off in just under an hour's time, going from the CBD to here at Parliament, where they'll be voicing that message for the Premier as well as her government. Now, among the changes they're calling for, they wanted an advisory group set up for the Minister so that victims themselves can have a seat at the table when it comes to the youth crime issue as well as potential solutions. They also want to see the ban on the sale of knives to anyone under the age of 18. Now, I spoke a short time ago to Indiana Clayton. She's just 14 years old, herself a victim of some terrifying home invasions. My message to the government is basically just, want, just saying to them, we want you to listen, because we're the next generation, and do they want these kids running it someday? Or do they want kids like me, who are at home and who are innocent, not doing this, to run it? The Youth Justice Minister Di Farmer will be meeting with some of the group later today, Brooke. OK, thanks, Andrea. A 48-year-old man has been charged with the murder of Tomislav Nemez, whose badly decomposed body was found in a bed at a Gold Coast home earlier this year. He will face court today. Also facing court today, a 41-year-old charged with attempted murder after allegedly breaking into his ex-partner's home in Sydney's northwest yesterday morning. Police say he was armed with a machete, hand ties and acid when he entered the Kellyville home. The families of three people who died following the deadly mushroom lunch in Victoria will hold off on laying their loved ones to rest while they wait on further information from police. And doors are about to open at Australia's largest road safety event for high school students at Sydney Olympic Park. Reporter Sarah Stewart is there for us this morning. Sarah, how many students are expected to attend? Yeah, good morning to you, Brooke. It's going to be over 24,000 here in person over the three days, but there'll be many more also logging online to watch this. And they're going to be learning the real-life consequences of road trauma for them, their family, for their friends. And I'm joined by Dr Ken now. He's from Careflight and also a doctor at Westmead. You've seen a lot of trauma in your, in your job. Yeah, I've been doing it for about 30 years. One of the big things that we see is people who are speeding a little bit above the speed limit. We're seeing an increase in trauma, unfortunately, over the past few years. One of the things we're going to show the, the students who come today and we're going to show you now is what happens if you go 10 kilometres faster. So you can see behind us they're setting up a, a mannequin. Where that mannequin is, is where they've already done a run. These are the people from Trent starting way down the corner, speed up to 50 and where they stopped. What we're going to show you now is what happens if instead of doing 50 they're doing 60 kilometres an hour. And it really does have big consequences. All right, well, we'll get them out of the way because we don't want anybody to get hurt here this morning. I've been trusted with the flag, so I'm going to wave them down. All right, if you can jump out of the way, we're going to show you what happens. All right, off you, off you go. Here they come. So this is going 60, 60 kilometres an hour. 60 kilometres an hour instead of 50. Oh, it feels fast. Oh, OK. So Not good. And the, the reality is, is that they're still doing about 30 kilometres an hour when they hit the car. Okay. So that difference between 60 and 50 mm. means you effectively are hitting that patient mm. at 30 kilometres an hour, my patient at 30 kilometres an hour. And this increase in trauma we're seeing, it's not so much the people who are driving our new modern big cars that have got all the safety equipment, it's people we're hitting, okay. it's delivery drivers. Yeah, it is really frightening. And you know what, 60 kilometres an hour, Brooke, doesn't seem that fast, but we've just seen the consequences of that. Absolutely. Really concerning. Thanks for that, Sarah. All right, over to you, Jane. It's a good eye-opener, isn't it? Mm. It really is. It's great really for the is. kids to get that education. Mm. And hopefully more kids can get it. Yeah, exactly. Straight ahead, Serena Williams makes an exciting announcement. We'll tell you Ooh. what it is right after this. Well, thank you so much for your company today. Round of applause for Jane. Oh, thank you, why, thank you. It was my yeah. pleasure. Hello, You're Jane. not so scary after all, Carl. Oh, oh, that's nice, isn't it? I'll right. try again tomorrow if Sylvia's sick. We'll see. Yeah. Let's hope she's better. No, I hope you learned a few things. Uh, you taught me well. You did, yeah. Good school. <laughs>
<laughs> I'm God, turn over to David yeah. and Sophie, I'm hey? Sophie got the bat. Jane's there because Sylvia's sick, but Sophie's here. Sophie's here. I have finally been given the Everyone's dropped out, so I'm the last last woman standing. There we go. And, and you know, what a way to go. Hey, great to have you here. Happy Thank Wednesday. Thank you for having me. Oh, We've got a great show for you at home today. Check this out. <laughs> A shock reality check. One in three Aussie kids fail to meet NAPLAN standards. Inside the results showing the writing on the wall. Forensic breakthrough. The 30-year-old cold case of ACDC manager Crispin Dye, a person of interest now identified after evidence was brought forward. Empty nesters on notice. Boomers asked to rent out their spare rooms. Could this make you cash and solve the housing crisis? The Royal Rebrand, how Meghan Markle plans to win over the public, a new spin on her image, coming soon. And legends never die. Shut up! You're killing me, Smalls. Yeah, 30 years on, we're going to head back to the Sandlot. The film's writer and director joins us live this Wednesday, the 23rd of August, 2023. <laughs> <laughs> Great to have you company this morning. I was waving at Carl. <laughs> Sometimes he likes to say goodbye on his exit from the studio and it's a thing. <laughs> a very happy morning to you guys at home. But first to our good news story of the day. The and John Farnham has shared some news to the nation this morning, releasing his first statement since being diagnosed with cancer. Richard Wilkins is right across this this morning. Dickie, this is just the best news. Yeah, well, look, it was 12 months ago, one year ago exactly today, when the nation held its breath and it was like, uh-oh, this is not good. John, under...